Hello and welcome to the Total Soccer Show. I am Daryl Grove and I'm joined by a man who in four hours and ten minutes <laughs> will be my colour commentator for the Richmond Kickers versus Charleston Battery game. It's Taylor Rockwell. Hello. Hey buddy, how you doing? Pretty good. You ready for some color commentary? Some play-by-play commentary in 95 to 100 degree heat? Oh yeah, I got yeah. my sunscreen, I got my shades. <laughs> oh yeah, do you? Yeah. So we'll, we'll be doing that later on. You can follow our commentary at richmondkickers.com slash matchday. You'll have to be pretty fast downloading the podcast to hear that in time though. <laughs> I have faith. I have faith that a few people could do that. <laughs> um, on today's show, Taylor, we are talking Christian Pulisic. We are talking Diego Costa. We're hopefully going to talk a little... Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, we're going to have a surprise supporters quiz sponsored by Roughneck Scarves. Surprise because I don't know who you'll be quizzing okay, me there we are. <laughs> about. And we'll be talking Jordan Morris. Yes, sir. So let's start with um, Christian Pulisic and the, I want to call it a news story. Mm-hmm. But it's actually more of a rumor, right? Yeah. Published by Sports One, um, a German uh, network and website, suggesting that because he wasn't on the Borussia Dortmund Match day squad at all. Mm-hmm. He is looking for a move away from BVB. And I believe they quote an anonymous source related to his camp saying that he's frustrated that he wasn't yeah. included, that he's frustrated that it seems like he's going to get a lack of minutes. So he wants a move away, a loan, if not a permanent move. Did you notice, though, that the, the quote wasn't actually a quote? It wasn't oh, of in course. quotation marks. Of course. It yeah. never is. It never is. It was like someone in his entourage said... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it was the, good, turtle. the good folks. <laughs> it would be turtle. The good folks over at uh, RMLS turtle did it good naturedly, right? He thought he was just like having a friendly conversation, and then he's like, "Oh, I didn't realize I was speaking to the press." Yeah, but he would also like, and be, then he's glaring over his shoulder, like, "No." First of all, I'm not thrilled that we're doing entourage references. I'm just I have saying, to say. I could I could write an episode of Entourage right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it like? Oh, there's a great honest trailer about it where it's like, babes, booze, bros. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just the three Bs. That's, That's all you need for an entourage yeah, episode, right? Is Vince going to do the movie? <laughs> Probably. That's the answer. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, it seems like maybe it was a story that was a bit hyped up, that maybe it's a big name with a big club in Germany, and so it's getting some media attention. But the good folks over at our MLS, the Reddit MLS page, kind of systematically destroyed this story from top to bottom. <laughs> How did they destroy it? I mean, just pointing out that, like, again, as you said, there's no quotes. Again, there's nothing really referencing the fact that he said he wants to move away. Mm-hmm. His father, I think six months ago, said they're super happy with Dortmund and they have complete faith in yep. Dortmund's ability to develop him as a player, even if that means him getting less playing time this coming season. Like, yep. like there's a lot of reasons to believe that he's just fine and that people are maybe rumor-mongering. I also think, so, Sport 1... Probably, you mentioned he's a big name. He's mm-hmm. not really, right? He's like a young up-and-coming name. He's a big name here in the United States. Mm-hmm. I imagine if I run a German website and mm-hmm. I'm like, huh, we don't have many clicks from the United States. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Let's write a player. Let's write a story about um, an up-and-coming US player that everyone's obsessed with. Yep. Right? And that'll, that'll get the job done. <laughs> but I also – and you're right. That's definitely a fair point. But I also do think that there's an element. Like one of the first comments I, I saw was from a person with uh, like a Manchester United flair. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what's the big deal? Just sell them now and buy them back for £100 million later. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I do, and I do wonder if there is that element of like people are scared to lose any you know, 17, 18, 19-year-old players for yeah. fear that they come good later on and all of a sudden you look foolish for having missed out. Well, that's so, what you do. You do the Barcelona-Real Madrid thing mm-hmm. and you put in a buyback clause, yep. right? That's all you um, got to do. Real Madrid recently got Morata back reasonably cheap. And mm-hmm. I think Barcelona, we talked about the move for Alan Hilalovic mm-hmm. uh, to... Where's he gone? He's joined Bobby Wood yep. at Hamburg. But they have, what, a 10 or 12 million euro buyback clause? I think they have a one year and a two year. I'm pretty sure. Right. They, they've inserted multiple buyback clauses. But if Halilovic has this incredible season and scores 50 goals mm-hmm. in the Bundesliga, they can be like, we'll give you 10 million. Yep. And they have, they'll have no choice but to accept. Yes. So big football's doing well. <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> well, let's, but we don't put much faith in this story, mm-hmm. right? But it is worth thinking about. Christian Pulisic's position at Borussia Dortmund because he didn't make that Super Cup squad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the players that started ahead of him. You ready? Mm -hmm. So Pulisic essentially plays either the left attacking wing, right attacking wing, or central attacking midfielder, right? Mm -hmm. He's like the 4-2-3-1. He's one of the the band of three behind Aubameyang, okay? So the guys who started, Dembele, 19-year-old Dembele, who looks an incredible player, Mm -hmm. right? New signing, looks an incredible player. Kagawa, Mm-hmm. was the number 10, and then Adrian Ramos was on the right, mm-hmm. okay? On the bench, Emre Moore, who we saw at the Euros, young Turkish mm-hmm. winger, looking good. Mario Goetze. He's decent. 
and Andreas Schürrle. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you can maybe make an argument with Emery Moore that he goes back and forth with him because they're similar in age, mm-hmm. but he's got to be definitely sixth choice be- behind those other five guys. Yeah, I think so. Dortmund added Goetze and Schürrle mm-hmm. and Dembele. Right. And so we saw Mkhitaryan leave and we thought, oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. And we didn't think about how many magnificent players were coming in the other Good Dortmund. to one as well. So there are, there are other players that have departed. Yeah, but he, I'm talking about just that band yeah. of attacking midfielders. Right. So it's, it's definitely slightly disconcerting to, to not have him in there. But, you know, it's just a game. It's, a, you know, it's the community shield of Germany. It's not that important of a game. Right. So it could just also be that he wasn't ready, that Thomas Tuchel wanted him to play with the reserves or yeah. get a little bit more match fitness. Could be any number of reasons. It might have been that Emery Moore has never played mm-hmm. um, a competitive game for Dortmund because he's a new signing, and you can't not have Goethe or Schürrle on the bench. So he maybe just thought, all right, Emery Moore deserves yeah. his chance, right? Yeah. Exactly. Because Pulisic played preseason. I remember us mm-hmm. talking about the goals he scored in preseason. Yeah, so yeah. It's not like he's been frozen out. He is not. I think, if anything, it, it might be that there will be a lone move in his future. And that actually, I think, scares me more than him staying Why? and fighting for a first team spot. Because with Dorman, he's fighting for a first team spot with a team that's going to have Champions League and DFB Pokal and the Bundesliga. So there's many, many games to be played. There's going to be injuries. There's always going to be opportunities. On top of that, yeah. he knows the facility. He knows the system. He knows the coach. So he can work his way up and play in that system and hopefully prove himself there. Whereas, how many times have we seen another a young player go on loan to a club, and we think it's going to be great because, okay, he's going somewhere else, and if he's almost making it at Dortmund, then he's definitely going to make it at Eintracht Frankfurt, for example, or mm-hmm. Julian Green at Hamburg. Then he goes there, maybe not so much, maybe he doesn't fit the system, maybe he's not working that hard, maybe the coach just doesn't like him or wants to do something else, maybe the coach gets fired and now you have a new coach. There's that's, any number of things that could go wrong. I mean, that's true, but that's oddly pessimistic, I think, especially for you because you tend to be quite positive. So, I mean, I would imagine Pulisic going to Eintracht Frankfurt mm-hmm. or Hamburg I'd be pretty confident that he's higher up the pecking order just because he's played at Dortmund at one of those places. I, I if think we could get a Halilovic, Bobby Wood, Christian Pulisic forward line, I, don't I would think watch he starts in that one. I would watch Hamburg every week. That's a front three that I would, I would uh, pay money to watch. It's a decent front three. It's a decent front three. By which I mean I would pay money to Fox Sports mm-hmm. to watch. But I think <laughs> I think what happens though, and I'll and I'll speak for myself, if not for you know the entire soccer community, I think that's probably fair uh, to say that. I think with really, really promising youngsters that we have a lot of emotional investment in mm-hmm. for any number of reasons, it's easy to kind of overhype them and be like, oh, well, he'll go to Frankfurt. You know, this is, again, hypothetical. No rumors linking him there as far as I know. And then be like, oh, he's definitely going to play. And that doesn't really, like, it's not based on what he's doing, what the team is doing, why he's being brought there. Like, and the best example I can give off the top of my head is, like, Adnan Yanazai going to Dortmund, where it's like, oh, well, he's going there, obviously, for a specific reason, and that's going to develop his abilities. Yeah. And then he goes there, coach doesn't like him, system doesn't fit him, he sits on the bench for six months and goes back. So you'd rather he stays at Dortmund? I think so, unless he's going to a club where, where like, and I don't, I know you can insert clauses into the contracts that say like he has to play a minimum of this many games. Mm-hmm. A lot of clubs don't want to do that, and that's totally fair. But unless there's, like, a good guarantee that there's a reason for this, that like, oh, they're playing this system that suits what Dortmund want from him, so it makes sense to send him there and see if he can prove himself. Then I'm excited by it. What if we turn up at the Richmond Kickers game tonight mm-hmm. and there's been a late addition to the roster? <laughs> Signed on loan, Christian Pulisic. I know his cousin played for the Richmond mm-hmm. United Academy, which mm-hmm. is uh, partly owned by the Kickers. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest, no disrespect to the Kickers, I'd be very disappointed. And, not, and, not, <laughs> and I, don't, like, I know you're saying it's a joke, but I really did see... I'd be really excited. In those articles, I did see like there's lots of interest from Premier League clubs and other Bundesliga clubs and even MLS. And no disrespect to that league, but I do not want him going back to MLS. I want he is a player that I we have I have full faith in that we talked about when we watched him play for the national team that he didn't really ever look like he was out of place. Mm-hmm. He he made smart decisions when he got the ball. I kind of got to the point where I was like he's going to do the right thing. Like he yeah. isn't going to try to dribble or do something stupid. You know where would be perfect? Hmm. Hull City. Because they have that shortage of first team players. <laughs> Listen, I wish you could see how my, big my eyes just got. If he went there, I mean, yeah. he's almost guaranteed to play just because he'd be one of few, few professionals at the club. Yeah. Is he represented by Jorge Mendes? George Mendes? <laughs> I don't, the whole city. Um, have a Mendes involvement? I, well, I'm just saying maybe he could go to Wolves. Oh, <laughs> hopefully we'll be talking about Wolves later. <laughs> Taylor's kind of teased promise that we're going to talk about yeah, Wolves yeah. on this show. <laughs> you're, you're not buying it yet? Some big stuff. I'll believe it when it happens. <laughs> okay. Should we move on to another US player sure. overseas? Um, DeAndre Yedlin. Mm-hmm. We've been waiting for this Sunderland move to mm-hmm. happen. It hasn't happened. They've signed Donald Love instead. He started the season at right back. Mm-hmm. And Yedlin has been 
given a squad number at Tottenham Hotspur. That's good. But it's 20 places off where he was. That's bad. So yeah. last time the squad was announced, he was number 12. Mm-hmm. Victor Wanyama, new signing, is now number 12. Mm-hmm. DeAndre Yedlin is number 32. Yes. Yes. Which is not great. <laughs> well, are we reading too much into the number? Because I'll give you another number 32. Mm-hmm. Carlos Tevez, playing for Manchester this, City. This is true because he wants to be number 32. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's worth reading into, if only to say that it means that he's probably not going to be there this season. Really? Yeah. I think I think it, when you bump a player down like that... I think it like means that, fringe of the squad, right? Yeah, I think it means fringe. I think it also... Like, it's usually a story. If you have a player who is this number and another player comes in, outside of, like, you'll hear the random stories. Of, like, I think it's usually in the NFL where, like, a player will buy the number off of another player. Right, like, yeah, yeah. And, like, that's more of, like, an interesting, funny story. But when it's, like, this guy wants your number and it means we value him more than you. <laughs> like, that's, that's it. Like, it's, it's akin to, like, if you are already in the locker room and then the coach comes to you and says, like, hey, this guy wants that locker, so you got to move down 10 spots. Like, it sort of tells you where their priorities are just yeah, a little yeah. bit, even well, if it's only a number. And, you know, again, yeah, you're right. Numbers don't necessarily mean anything that much because you can have a player scoring goals as 99 or 45 or who knows. Yeah. But I think in this situation, it shows that he is not in their primary squad. And I think the main thing is where he is on the fullback depth chart. Mm-hmm. And we know that Carl Walker's first choice right back. Yeah. Uh, Trippier is probably second choice right back. Mm-hmm. I know Yedlin spent some minutes at left back in preseason, but it's Danny Rose, first choice. Ben Davies, who's magnificent for Wales, second choice. Right, So he's at least he, fifth choice. Yeah, he's fullback. fifth choice for two spots. Yeah. yeah. It's not great. Maybe that's what the 3-2 the is about, right? It's yeah. the two <laughs> positions you could possibly play, but add them together and that's where you are on the depth chart, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> I'd even say Cameron Carter-Vickers has more chance of playing right now than DeAndre Yedlin because of the injuries in central defense. Yeah, I mean right? he's he is like third choice centre back. He is locked on to be in the first team roster this season. He's already been on the bench. He's already been on the eighteen for Tottenham's uh, Premier League opener. Yep, and we're one Belgian centre back injury away. Yep. Yeah, yep. or I mean, or Champions League, or FA Cup, or League Cup. Like yep. he's definitely going to be playing some minutes this season just because they need the numbers. So there have been, rumors. and also he's very good. Don't get me wrong. There have been rumours linking Yedlin with Hull City Mm -hmm. and and Derby County. I feel like every player who's sort of available for loan is being linked with Hull City Mm because it's an obvious move for them to bolster their roster. I went and did the research. Yep. Um, they do have a right back, uh, Moses um, Adubajo, mm. who's out for six months with a knee injury. No. Um, the guy at, left, at right back to start the season was Ahmed um, El, El Mohamadi. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Ahmed El Mohamadi. That's the guy, yeah. Yep. So mm-hmm. you pronounced it way mm-hmm. better than me. Uh, so, But he's sort of one of those. He's actually similar to Yedlin in that some people see him as a more attacking right yeah. player. Some people see him as a right back. But... Speaking of de- like, if you can be the if you sign for Hull, you're suddenly like the 14th. <laughs> you're only definitely only a maximum three places away from the starting eleven in terms of senior players. This is true. <laughs> that said, I, I felt like I, I, I have to believe that y- Yedlin never thought like a couple years ago that he'd be like, man, I hope I get this move to Sunderland, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like over Hull or Derby. <laughs> and if he goes to Derby, that's I would say decidedly a step down. But he, a step down where he could, I mean, this is what we predicted last season, mm-hmm. that he'd go to the championship and play a full season. Instead, yeah. he got half a season at Sunderland, yeah. who were almost a championship club yeah. at one point. Yes. One point worth bringing up here. DeAndre Yedlin is 23 years old. Mm-hmm. Christian Pulisic, 17 years old. Mm-hmm. Pulisic could make five appearances for Dortmund this year, mm-hmm. and it's kind of okay. Yep. Right? It is kind of okay. Mm-hmm. If Yedlin has a season where he doesn't play much, mm-hmm. 23, suddenly this isn't like a young player making his way. This is what your career is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like that thing where you have dreams of being, um, let's say, a poet. Mm-hmm. But if you've worked at, um, if you've <laughs> worked at like Circuit City for twenty years, yeah. you work at Circuit City. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At least professionally. And I think that's why. To go back to the first point, sorry, I just got so animated. My mic needed to pay for it. Um, you can make the argument, or at least I would make the argument that that's why I want Pulisic to stay with Dortmund because you run that risk of if you go out on loan and if it doesn't work or if you don't get that many, many minutes, it is in my mind a year wasted. That it's it is that one year, and all of a sudden now he's eighteen and it's you know a little bit less time, a little bit more pressure. Whereas if you stay with Dortmund, he gets five appearances, still impresses. Then maybe he goes out on loan next season. Maybe that's more okay than yeah. just being like one season that could be a potential like outlier. And now he's got to prove that it's not. Final thing on Pulisic. I know mm-hmm. we've talked long about him. What we could really do with is another Bayern Munich raid. 
Yep. We could do with Bayern Munich raiding and buying like four attacking midfielders and knocking Pulisic right yeah. up the order. Give it six, six months to 12 months and I'm sure that'll happen. <laughs> um, another guy, Matt Miazga. Yep. Um, there was a rumour going around that Matt Miazga had not been given mm-hmm. um, a squad number at Chelsea. I checked the website. He absolutely does. He's he number 20, yep. just like he was last season. Yep. Right? Yeah. He's listed. I think the confusion is that he's listed as a young player, not as a senior player. So you have that like first... Chelsea squad of the mm-hmm. big names that everybody knows but they've listed their young players separately and there's five or six guys in there Ru- Ruben Loftus-Cheek is one of them Kennedy yeah. is another one Kennedy who was listed on many reports as having received a number but Matt Miazga didn't right. that was usually the line it was like Matt, uh, Kennedy received number blank but Matt Miazga curiously was left off indicating a move is likely Right. but Matt Miazga's in that list he's yeah. number 20 so is that the list of so there's a first team squad but there's probably a few guys uh, I'd include Loftus-Cheek in this who mm-hmm. maybe flit between the first team and then yep. they'll sometimes go and play for the under 23s I mm-hmm. believe it is now in Premier League 2 as mm-hmm. it's called it's a new thing for this season Yes, sir. Right? so you can be in both squads it's not necessarily a bad thing right. and I've also seen rumours linking Miazga with Eintracht Frankfurt mm-hmm. I know we keep, keep linking players with the same team I think that's why they came to mind so readily <laughs> yes but that was I think like four or five days ago since then the reports are that Chelsea have snubbed that move because they've had offers from Premier League teams okay it might, be Premier League, City? It might be Premier League team and yeah that would probably be the safe bet <laughs> <laughs> so I think they'd rather keep him in England. But the well, other the other reports I've seen are saying that Conte thinks he has too much inexperience to be trusted with the Chelsea Premier, er, first team this season. I think that's fair. Agreed. Like, I have seen him have magnificent moments, mm-hmm. especially for New York. Yep. Like, I've seen him have many good games for New York. I've also seen him have great games for the uh, US U20s. I've seen him have a howler for the US under 23s. Yep. Remember in the uh, Columbia playoff game and he mm-hmm. kicked the ball into his own face? Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's not great. That's not great. Chiellini doesn't do that. And you you may disagree, and I'm curious if you do, who your nominee is, but I feel like if there's one coach that prides his, like, that really values his players doing exactly what they need to do, and if they don't, they're going to hear about it, it's Antonio Conte. Yeah. And I don't think I would want to like have a miss kick and have to hear about it from yeah. him. I don't think there's another coach that I would be more intimidated by if I'd made a mistake. I mean, I saw him on the sidelines at Euro 2016. Yeah. There's also, you know, you think of some people as being uh, a good judge of character, mm-hmm. right? I feel like you can say Conte's a good judge of centre-backs. Yep, right? I think so. <laughs> whether I think that's just so. a reputation he's acquired or whether that's actual factual. Yeah, don't care. <laughs> his opinion carries <laughs> yeah. weight, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so where does Miazga go? Okay, if not Hull City. Because actually, you know, we did our um, Mack Weldon um, mm-hmm. Play of the weekend, mm-hmm. and I went for. Who's like you went Coutinho, mm-hmm. and I went Juan Mata. Mm-hmm. I was so excited about him, like changing the narrative. Yep. I forgot that the guy I was really excited about was Curtis Davis playing centre back yep. for Hull City, mm-hmm. right? So I'm saying it's not necessarily like they're hurting in that position. I think Sunderland would be another solid place for him to go. Okay. I think Sunderland is, in my mind, a different animal than years past because it's not Paolo Di Canio or Dick Advocat or Sam Allardyce. Uh-huh. It is David Moyes, who I think. Yeah. Well, Moyes is more in the Allardyce role than like the bunch of like yeah, crazy gambles yeah. they were taking before. Yeah, exactly. right? It's a more exactly. solid, steady guy. Right, and but you there's, experienced is what I'm looking for. There you go. Yeah. There's consistent rumors linking Lamina Kone with a move to Everton, uh, okay. and then maybe Phil Jagielka going the other way. But we've heard from our Everton scout that Phil Jagielka has been very slow mm-hmm. getting up to full fitness. He started the first game, right? So who knows? <laughs> did concede a goal? Did that Everton defense? So is this part of the carousel? Maybe right. This is part of like mm-hmm. uh, like Ashley Williams went from Swansea to Everton, mm-hmm. and like it all it all sort of goes in a circle. And then maybe there's going to be a team left at the end. It's not like musical chairs. Yep. You play musical chairs in the US? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So everyone sits down, and there's a club that they all sit down at the end, and there's one club don't get a seat, a seat being a centre back, and they win the Matt Miazga. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of like, okay, we've got to plug a gap. Yeah, so I could see him yeah. going there. He's young, he's physical. I feel like he could fit that Sunderland model. So that could work well. I'm more shocked by the fact that you call it musical chairs. What should well, I Just because you're the English and you call everything weird things. I would have, I would have, been, I would have assumed it was like chairsy musicies or something. <laughs> just, just to be difficult and different. You spent too much time in wee Britain. <laughs> <laughs> and in 30 Rock, where you ride your velocipedes and, your go, and you use your go-up boxes. I ride my velocipede every day. I know you do, buddy. I know um, you do. Okay, final American in England here we've got to talk about is... Emerson Hindman. Mm-hmm. So, oh, we haven't heard anything about him this week, so it's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, we mentioned that he wasn't in the uh, the match day squad mm-hmm. for Bournemouth's defeat to Manchester United mm-hmm. um, in the opening game. We did not know 
that Heinemann was actually injured in July and therefore was not in contention to be in the match day squad. If only there was some sort of network that existed that was uh, responsible for <laughs> keeping track of young, exciting players and then reporting back on key developments in their, in their ongoing uh, careers. So one hour before we hit record, <laughs> we got an email from Richie Garcia, who is the Emerson Heinemann scout in the Total Sock Show Network, yep. who has genuinely kept us up to date on yeah, everything Heinemann related since the day he started scouting Heinemann. Yep until this week <laughs> when he forgot to tell us that Heinemann is injured right. and therefore and I want to say credit to uh, to Richie yeah. for sort of owning it and saying oh I forgot to tell you yeah. this yeah. And, I, and I am just kidding because we appreciate yeah. any reports and I really do it makes me sincerely touched when people write like I'm really sorry I didn't get you this information <laughs> it's like it's okay but I like I like this um, establishing um, a culture of responsibility yeah. in the Total Sock Show Scouting Network that Richie owned it and you're responsible us. for that young man's career yes <laughs> we need to know these things <laughs> but also thank you to everybody who yes. emailed to let us know that we'd made a mistake there and mm -hmm. our apologies. This is a correction, I guess. I but also everybody was polite. That's the thing. Us. That's what I have to get to. Is we, we really did have, I would say, low side 15 tweets or emails about yeah. this. Probably closer to 20, uh -huh. maybe more than that. And all of them like, you know, I know you've probably heard this already and I don't want to be a bother. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I just wanted to let you know. It was very, very nice taken in the right way we appreciate it yeah, thanks guys I feel like we may have the most polite listenership in all of podcasts let's keep that going let's keep that going yeah um, speaking of I also mentioned that um, Harry Kane subbed out for Spurs against Everton to replace by Vincent Janssen mm -hmm. We also heard about that. Mm -hmm. It was incorrect. Yep. Jo Vincent Janssen joined um, Harry Kane in the attack. It was Eric Dyer who came off. But I such actually... was Janssen's performance that we just assumed. <laughs> well, he, I did add a little correction. Um, like I, I dropped in an audio correction. But maybe half the people who listen will not have heard that. So I just want to not besmirch Harry Kane's reputation anymore. So... Apologies to Mr. Harry Kane. He played the whole game. Consider yourself unbesmirched. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Also, while we're doing corrections, we should note that we're, we're still not entirely sure what happened with our last show, the, the referee consultant show. Yeah. We uploaded it. It went to air. Uploaded the same file. One file, the one that's there now, was an hour and nine minutes. The yeah. first one was 21 minutes or so. This one I'm not taking the blame for. Yeah, you shouldn't. I think we can blame our... I think it was yeah, a technological yeah. error on the part of our file host, yes. who we won't name because we don't want to spread bad words about We them. will not. But yeah, so that was <laughs> that was a fun uh, oh no moment mm -hmm. when I like... Because I posted that show and then I got like three messages in a row. And then I had that... Because I keep all the files together, and so I was like, what file did I post instead? Is it like an outtake where Daryl said something horrible or I said something <laughs> stupid? But in the end, it was just, uh, I guess, server mishap. But it should be good to go, but we apologize for that. So, yeah, if you haven't heard that, or if you accidentally, if you downloaded a 20-minute show and you're like, mm -hmm. huh, that's weird. It's, it's weird that Daryl just stopped talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just gave it. Yep. It's, um, it's the referee show with official Total Sock Show referee consultant Scott Zawadzki, where he lays out the new laws of the game and answers listener questions about refereeing. If you haven't heard it already, I encourage you to go back, download that, and listen to the whole thing. I do love the idea, though, that like just... Because it does cut off with you. Apparently, it was 2150 is where that file cut, and then it was just you in the mid-sentence and then stopping. And I like the idea that some people just thought you just were like, you know what, I've had enough. Mid-sentence, you walked out. Scott and I didn't say anything. We just followed suit, and we just, we just ended it there. But that was not the case. It's all good. All right, so that's your little roundup of U.S. men's national team players, yeah. uh, young U.S. men's national team players mm -hmm. overseas. I believe that's I've like, been promised yes. a Wolverhampton. Let's talk about young Portuguese players <laughs> <laughs> in the Midlands, shall we? So we talked oh. a little bit uh, before uh, on uh, a few episodes ago about Mr. Grove, his support of the Wolverhampton Wanderers, Wolves, if you will. Or the Wolverhampton Wolves, as FoxSucker.com called them this week. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so since that time we talked about like, the bio and what we thought was going to happen there. Since that time, more players coming in, more big-name players linked or big-ish name players linked for a lot of money. So since last we spoke about Wolves, right? Yeah. So there was um, Jeff Shi is the new chairman. Mm -hmm. The new Chinese ownership group came in. Mm -hmm. They said, Kenny Jackett, the coach, he's our coach. Two days after we finished recording that show, mm -hmm. they fired Kenny Jackett. They brought in Walter Zenga. Mm -hmm. If you're a New England Revolution fan, you'll know Walter Zenga mm -hmm. as the guy who played in goal for you sometime in the 90s. If you're an Italian soccer fan, you'll know Zenga as one of the all-time great keepers. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a fan of uh, Saudi Arabian teams that nearly got relegated, you'll also be familiar with Walter Zenga. Yeah, and it was kind of a bummer for me <laughs> because you texted me that and you're like, I'm not sure about this. Uh, and so 
but I had just read this thing about Walter, Walter Zenga and how he was this really exciting coach and how it was a really strong appointment and how he could do really good things. So I was like, what's your – oh, Walter Matsari. I was talking about Watford, not, <laughs> not Walter Zenga. <laughs> then I read about Zenga and I was like, good boy. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a good thing, I guess, question yeah. mark. But, and even that isn't the thing I was worried about. If you remember, mm-hmm. when we were talking about this takeover, it was heavily influenced by George Mendes, mm-hmm. right, who is um, a friend of – or a friend to the investment group that took yep. over at Wolves. And I was worried there would be an influx of Mendes players. And that's kind of what's happened. Yep. Right? We've had, I've got the list here, Helder Costa and Jao Teixeira have both come in on loan from Benfica. Um, Silvio, the fullback, um, was an Atletico player who was on loan at Benfica, who is now a Wolves player. Um, we've been linked with um, Talisca, the Brazilian, who I don't know who he plays for, but he's based in Portugal mm-hmm. uh, somewhere. The only um, player I was excited about that Wolves did sign was John Daddy Budvarsen. Oh, yeah. From Euro 2016. Wait, you weren't excited when I mentioned that to you last time. You were like, oh, but he wasn't even one of the big ones. Like, <laughs> I, well, I, I don't know. Well, he, actually, he's since scored a late equalizer. Well, not late. He's since scored an equalizer against Rotherham on the opening day of the season. Hey, you're fine with I'm it. I'm more pro Budvarsen. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. You also missed a penalty against Ipswich. Wasn't so. there a 35-year-old defender in there too? So there's a, there's a story linking Wolves with Luis Sao, mm-hmm. who is a 35-year-old Brazilian centre-back who plays for, you've never guessed. Is it Benfica? It's Benfica. Shocker. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's suddenly very strange what's going on at Wolves because suddenly all it's, it's sort of what I thought was happening, which mm-hmm. is all these Mendes-linked, Benfica-linked players joining Wolves and it's suddenly not the same team that I was used to supporting, and I'm having trouble adjusting to it. Well, that's my question for you. I don't want to ask, like, like, how are you making that adjustment, or how do you feel? But I want to ask, like, is this a good thing? Like, do you think this is a good thing for the club that you support? Do you think it will be, like, it will facilitate a challenge for, for promotion, if not outright promotion? Like, or do you think it is more of a, I don't know, we're going to have to wait and see, because I don't know about these guys, and it might just be a way for George Mendes to make money. I think it... I'm still leaning towards it may be the latter. Really? Do you remember the Anderson Taliska thing we mentioned? Mm-hmm. And we said that what, the true test of this, did we talk about this on the show or just um, do we just chat? I'm not sure. I think on the show. We do both. So I knows? think on the show you said the thing with Taliska is to watch because there was a, a rumor linking him with also with Liverpool, right? Mm-hmm. He's this young, exciting Brazilian tacky midfielder, plays for Benfica. Yeah. Um, there was a story linking him with Liverpool and with Wolves. And you thought maybe if it's that Mendes is using Wolves oh, yeah, the link we, as oh, this leverage is fair. This is fair, yeah. to make Liverpool act, then mm. you'll know that maybe it's Wolves are just like a tool that they have to mess with other teams. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that. Sorry, go ahead. Well, he didn't join Liverpool. Nope. Then there were more rumors linking him with Wolves. Mm-hmm. I saw a story this morning before we came into studio. Besiktas. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. That's Interesting. where he's going. Yeah, and that was my that was my concern for the club that you support is supporting a big club that frequently has a lot of money, as I do with Manchester United. That you then become the kind of leverage for either players that want yeah, better but contracts. Man United are the team that where players actually end up. Yeah, but it, but see the the more frightening one I would say for you is if you become the club that is the crazy one with money, where mm-hmm. it's like they'll throw fifteen million pounds at my guy. Are you willing to throw fifteen million pounds? Well, that's I think yeah. that's what has happened with Talisca. I'm kind of worried about this. Yeah. And then there's a rumor today linking Wolves with Mario Balotelli. <laughs> Speaking of crazy. Speaking of throwing money at crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, which, I mean, I guess that's a good move for you guys. I don't know if that's a Is good it? move for him. Right, uh, yes, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I think he's, he's relatively settled in England, as much, as much settled as Mario Balotelli can be. And maybe playing the championship, less spotlight, but still spotlight, yeah. but maybe more freedom. I mean, I can predict for you what will happen mm-hmm. Balotelli if he signs for Wolves mm-hmm. will be amazing for like half a season yep. everybody will be thrilled he'll be saying all great things mm-hmm. then at some point he'll start thinking oh I'm killing it in the championship mm-hmm. I've scored 20 goals in 15 games I should play for a Premier League team mm-hmm. it's January someone should come in for me and then he'll start agitating for a move hmm. but Can could it also that? be that he scores a bunch of goals Wolves are top of the table and he thinks six more months and I'm playing for a Premier League team and Maybe. I'm the one that got them there and then I can demand more money. Okay, so okay, so there's that yeah. situation, right? And mm-hmm. that is almost, in, even if Balotelli doesn't sign, it kind of encapsulates the gamble that is what's happened, right? Mm-hmm. On the flip side, you've got a bunch of young Wolves players mm-hmm. who have come through the academy, mm-hmm. right? There's a guy like uh, Danny Bart who mm-hmm. is, um, he has Punjabi heritage, big Punjabi population in Wolverhampton. Like he's a local guy playing for Wolves, playing centre-back. Right? Mm-hmm. Suddenly, maybe Luis Al, this 35 year old Brazilian, comes in. Literally, not literally, figuratively, 
elbows Danny Bart out the way. Mm-hmm. Now Louis Sao is the captain and is playing centre back. Mm-hmm. You know if, what I'm saying? If only the country of your birth had like just instituted rules to make it harder for people not born <laughs> in that country to come in and get jobs. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't have to worry about these things. I don't think that applies to Brazilian international. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? And there's like yeah. um, there are uh, Dominic Oyofo plays mm-hmm. right back right now. Uh, Courtney House is this like young. He, I don't think he came to the academy, but he's like a young guy who's playing for Wolves. Mm-hmm. And there's um, Enobakare, the guy that we have in the scouting network. There's a guy called Niall Ennis that everyone's really excited about. And there's all these. There's a history at Wolves of players coming through the youth team, like Robbie Keane and all those mm-hmm. guys, and coming into the team. And I suddenly wonder if suddenly the path for all these young players is blocked by, to put it um, harshly, Benfica rejects. But I'm not sure that's the team I want to support. I what, want to support the team that's full of exciting young players. See, this is what's confusing to me, is that you have always been a very practical person when it comes to soccer. Yeah. And maybe that's just because, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but like maybe that's what happens when you support Wolves. But like... But it seems like this is like a, an opportunity for you guys to be one of those teams that has a ton of money and spends that money and gets promoted. And I'm wondering then, like, is promotion to you the end-all be-all of playing in the Premier League? You got to watch them on TV whenever you want to. And with that comes maybe, but to do so, you have five or six guys and a couple of those local guys get kicked out. Or are you saying you would rather have a local team that maybe plods away in the championship and maybe just maybe one day gets back to the Premier League. Well, I kind of want, I want one of the extremes, right? Mm-hmm. I want either a local team that's mm-hmm. a lot of like guys coming through. And bear in mind, this is like a long-term plan, right? Yeah. Wolves have like category one academy status, mm-hmm. which is somewhat rare, you know, for a non-big team to have such great sort of youth uh, setup, right? And that's a thing that's been worked on and is slowly paying off with guys coming through, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't want that plan to have like been in place and then be brushed away to get sort of second tier players right but if it does turn out that the money that's been spent means we get incredibly good players yeah. right so not 35 year old center backs at the end of their career mm-hmm. but incredibly good players if we were if we were going for john stones instead then i'd be super excited so I want, yeah. the, I want the extreme i don't want the middle the middling part but isn't there an argument to be made and i promise you fans of <laughs> you people who aren't interested in a championship side from daryl's hometown we'll move on a little bit but but isn't there an argument to be made that maybe these are the stopgap measures you need, that you need young loanies and veteran, veteran yeah, players like to come in to, the big to get you to the Premier League, yeah, and, and then it, you can spend that money to get the players who want to come to a Premier League team? If it is that, then I can't lie and say that I won't be super excited yeah. if that's what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. So Daryl isn't lying and might be possibly super excited <laughs> depending on what happens over the course of the season. And for people who do care... Wolves are away to Birmingham City this weekend. Ooh. So that's the biggest game of the season so far. It's a proper local derby, Wolves versus Blues. With some American interest and some scouting network interest in there. So could be good times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, shall we move on, Mr. Grove, to my retribution? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a supporters quiz. Daryl Grove threw one of these at me last time. I went 0 for 5. I think that he might do better today. But we have the Roughneck Scarves supporters group quiz uh, sponsored by... Can you guess who, Mr. Grove? Roughneck Scarves. You are correct. Uh, Roughneck Scarves, spelled R-U-F-F. That's how you spell rough, just in case you're wondering. I'm going to leave it to everyone else to spell neck and scarves and dot com. Uh, <laughs> They're the official scarf provider for U.S. soccer, MLS, NCAA, and the USL. Roughneck Scarves is committed to providing passionate soccer fans with outstanding customer service, professional design, and the highest quality soccer scarves in the world. Mm-hmm. Well... Speaking of highest quality, we've got a highest quality supporters group for you to take some shots at today, take some guesses. All right, yeah, so last time we did this, in the Mm -hmm. last Roughneck Scarves supporters group quiz, I gave you a surprise quiz on the Timbers Army. Mm -hmm. It was tough, I won't lie. Mm -hmm. You got 0 for 5. Yeah, I think you'll do (laughs) better. I've I've left mine maybe a little bit more open for interpretation. Are you setting high expectations to make me look worse? No, I'm not. Okay. But we're going to be talking about the Empire Supporters Club. Of New York City FC? No, oh. the New York Red Bulls. Off to a bad start, Ooh. my friend. <laughs> Get right. one out of the way early. The ESC was founded in 1995 in anticipation of the start of Major League Soccer. Okay. So before Major League Soccer existed. It was created by members of the New York City firm, a supporters group for a short-lived A-League franchise. What mythological creature was that team named after? So they were the New York somethings. Did they actually exist then in the A-League? Mm-hmm. Mythological creature. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, gonna I'm go, assuming mythological. I'm going to go dragons. The centaurs. The, centaurs. the New York centaurs. So hey, You give me enough access to science, I'll make you a centaur. <laughs> if you give me enough access to science, said every low-rent mad scientist ever. <laughs> All right. 
Why did the founders of the group opt for the name Empire Supporters Club as opposed to something relating to what the club would be eventually called, which was the Metro Stars? So why did they go Empire Supporters Club over, say, Metro Stars Supporters Club? Think about it for a moment. So New York is the Empire State. Mm -hmm. So they just wanted something that was related to the entire state? That's a very sound guess, and I think probably what the narrative will become over time. But the answer is because the club was originally going to be called the Empire Soccer Club. Wow. Yep. Uh, Imagine yeah. the headlines. Team owners uh, John Kluge, I think is how you pronounce that, and Stuart Sabotnik instead named the team the Metro Stars after Kluge's media company, Metro Media. So if you're ever wondering why they were called... That. Yeah, and apparently Adidas, I think it was, uh, proposed that they be called the Metro Flash, and then that was rejected, so they went with Metro Stars instead. El Pastor Bar and Restaurant, which also happens to be the closest bar to Red Bull Arena, probably not surprisingly, was the official game day pub of the Empire Supporters Club. Mm -hmm. I say was because it now appears to be closed, Hmm. Uh, so saith Yelp. With that in mind, I'd like you to tell me what El Pastor's rating was on Yelp (laughs) out of five stars. (laughs) Wow. Okay. And And I'll give you this hint. Routinely, I would see reviews that said, not great things, and then, but I'll bump it a star because they're the official bar or because it's great for soccer. Three and a half. You got it. Yes. It is three and a half stars. Is this three and a half kind of the average Yelp review? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Two more questions. I can't lose, all right? Yeah, we are. Uh, when the team was playing at Giant Stadium, the ESC congregated in Section 101. At Red Bull Arena, however, the ESC congregates in Section 101. Where in the stadium is that section located? I've been to Red Bull Arena. Mm-hmm. Can't remember where the sections were. Okay, so it's got to be, it's got to be lower tier. It's got to be behind one of the goals. I'll give it to you directly behind the goal. There we, there go. we go. Good job, Mr. Grove. Final question: The group's website proudly proclaims that quote, "Our unique makeup has influenced our style in the stands." They wear and- makeup. What? They wear makeup? <laughs> yes. Like Kiss? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> A lot of cats in there. And that uh, quote: "The ESC sings in both English and Spanish." In fact, they claim to have taken inspiration from four different groups, backgrounds, or areas. Name two. Name two of the groups they take. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it can be like... Are we talking like ethnic groups? No. So it's basically like they say, like, we've taken inspiration from here and from there and from these people and from that group. So there's four specific ones. Think about soccer culture. Think about the fact that they sing in different languages. What would you say are two of those? I don't understand the question. Am I saying, like, they sing some in Spanish? No. So, like, so when you think about supporters' culture as a whole, yes. where do you think American su- MLS supporters' culture, where do you think it is oh, primarily so derived okay. from? So, England. Mm-hmm. Um, part British supporter is part of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Germany? Mm-mm. I'll give you one more. They Aust- sing in two languages, Daryl. Come on now. Italy. Ah, incorrect. We are part South American bara part European ultra, part British supporter, with a little local flavor thrown in. Those are their four. <laughs> a little bit of Harrison. <laughs> there you go. So you went two for five. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all, Mr. Especially because the last question was inanswerable. Oh, get out of here. You could have done it. All you had to say was Bara or some sort of South American group, and I would have given it to you. Also, inanswerable is not a word, is it? Also not. I think that hurts your case all the more. But yes, so credit to ESC for being around since 1995. Credit to you for getting two points. And credit to any potential listeners who want to utilize Roughneck Scarves. Yeah. So it's roughneckscarves.com. Com, R-U-F-F-N-E-C-K scarves.com. Mm-hmm. You can uh, get U.S. national team scarves. You can get MLS scarves, NCAA scarves, USL scarves. You Cust- get custom kickers, scarves. Or Charleston Battery. Make your own. You can, yeah. You can design your own scarf mm-hmm. and have that shipped to you. Um, you have all-inclusive pricing. So Roughneck's simple and honest pricing means no hidden fees, no unexpected shipping charges, and no surprises. That's correct, and you can get 20% off any scarf in their shop with the promo code Total Soccer Show, all one word, all uppercase. And that's roughneckscarves.com. Thank you to Roughneck Scarves for sponsoring the supporters group quiz. Indeed. Shall we move on to a question, Mr. Grove? Yes, we got a question from Scott Wiggum about the um, West Ham v. Chelsea game. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Chelsea v. West Ham game. Right, so the game finished 2-1 to Chelsea with a winner from Diego Costa. There's the background. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's Scott's question. Diego Costa's slide tackle challenge on West Ham's keeper, Adrian, was certainly cringeworthy, but also worthy of a yellow card, in my opinion. The ref called nothing, and many have speculated that this was because Costa was already on a yellow. Mm -hmm. In the end, Costa scores the game winner, yet to me, he shouldn't have been on the pitch. 
So the question is, can the EPL Review Board issue yellow cards or only red card style suspensions? I can only recall actual suspensions and the rescinding of red cards. Okay. Before we answer... How pedantic do we want to get with this? Before we answer, let's talk about that tackle. Okay. All right, so Adrian has the ball. West Ham keeper has Mm -hmm. the ball. Costa sort of pressures him. Adrian cuts Mm -hmm. way too hard, right? He cuts so hard that the ball goes behind him. And as he's backtracking, Costa comes sliding in, misses the ball, and I believe the bottom of his cleat connects with Adrian's Mm -hmm. shin. Yeah. Not a good tackle. Not a good tackle. Reckless tackle? Yep. Yellow card tackle. It probably should have been Mm -hmm. a yellow card. Yeah. Okay. And I think that if you were to... This goes back to the question I had for Scott, uh, the referee consultant, last show, Mm -hmm. uh, where I said, like, basically, can past behavior inform present decision making and this is what i'm asking like if that's ruben loftus cheek or say matt miazga somehow gets subbed on it forward if he makes that challenge is it even a talking point or is it like eh, it was bad but whatever but because it's diego costa who we know has that tendency to try to rile up players and you could make the argument who's the best player for him to annoy and get in the head of it's probably the goalkeeper yeah maybe leaving a, a foot in on an ankle makes sense but if you've seen this tackle, mm-hmm. it's a yellow card tackle. Oh, yeah. It has to be. Yeah. He's already on a yellow. Mm-hmm. So I sort of agree with Scott's idea that referee mm-hmm. Anthony Taylor, that's the referee's name, right. um, sort of thought, I don't want to necessarily send him off. But if, the, if that was like a free yellow card where mm-hmm. there aren't any real immediate consequences, I think he gets it. Yeah. Okay. To answer Scott's question, the answer is no. There is no review board that can issue yellow cards, um, ye- that can issue yellow cards mm-hmm. for like a second yellow for right. a red card. Mm-hmm. The reason is that the referee, Anthony Taylor, saw the incident, Mm -hmm. right? Gave a free kick to West Ham for the tackle. So the issue's dealt with in the moment, Mm -hmm. right? Right. As I understand it, there's a a referee panel of three referees that can issue suspensions for things that have not been seen by the referee. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that right? And so there's actually, and this is where, this is when I initially said, how pedantic do we want to be? I said that because there is no real thing called the EPL review board, right? Yeah. You have two different review groups. So there's the one that you're talking about, which uh, may be like retroactive punishment, essentially, if something's been missed. Then there's another one that's responsible for, say, when Dele Ali got the red card last season, Andy Carroll a few seasons passed. If you want to protest that, if you want to dispute that red, you yeah. take it to a, another independent panel, yep. and they then rule on whether or not that red card is upheld and what the suspension should be yeah. if it is. So if I understand correctly, you can have your suspension reduced, right, if you have a successful appeal right. mm-hmm. um, to one of those panels, right? Right. But there genuinely is no panel that can say that should have been a yellow card right. um, and therefore two yellows would have been a red. Mm-hmm. So he's off. And there's especially no panel that can overrule a referee who has already made a decision. This is the right. key part for me. Anthony Taylor saw that tackle, decided it was a free kick and not a card. Decision is made. No one can contest it. Right. And there's a reason for that. If referees make decisions mm-hmm. and then everything can be contested, mm-hmm. then it just undermines the referee endlessly. Right. right? Imagine yeah. if every decision you make is then subject to an appeal. You're in all kinds of trouble. And that's why I think, honestly, like it took both of us a fair amount of Googling <laughs> to get to the bottom of this yeah. one. And even then, I feel like we've probably missed a few spaces. There's probably yeah. some gray area. And I think that's intentional. I think that the referees <laughs> – and it's been a problem where, like, the Referees Association – I forget the official acronym – has gotten stick from before for not being very clear about how they operate. I think FIFA had to come in when they did some, like, independent test and found that a lot of the referees didn't properly understand the offside rule. So I think that they – try to keep it intentionally murky, intentionally vague, because they don't want teams to know exactly how they operate, exactly what the process is, yeah. when you can do this, and what you could expect from this. I think they try to I'm keep sure it... that's little... true. That sounds very conspiracy to me. Well, I think it's just more so that it's it, if you're a group that kind of prides itself on autonomy and making the correct decision and not being questioned all the time, then you don't want everyone to know how to properly question you so that you can immediately get a result or reaction. So So the referees are like the secret police. Kind (laughs) of. A little bit. (laughs) The not-so-secret police, yes. That's how we're going to have to refer to Premier League referees in future. I am fine with that. They're not so secret, <laughs> please. Uh, but the answer to Scott's question is no, no. There can be no extra yellow for Diego Costa, even though there probably should have been yes. yeah. at the time, mm-hmm. right? Yep. If you have a question you, for us, you can email it to contact at totalsoccershow.com. If you are a $10 a month subscriber to the Total Soccer Show, we guarantee to answer at least one question per month that you send us. This is true. We have a few questions lined up. I've got, we've got one that we're going to answer probably on Friday's mm-hmm. show, Taylor, that I'm super excited about. Yeah, to the um, point that we've been kind of putting it off because yeah. we want to be able to dedicate enough time uh-huh. to answering it. 
And and not to reveal whose question it is, but it involves golden eras. So <laughs> the unnamed person who sent that question knows who they are. So yep. that question's coming on Friday. Yep. Um, yeah, so if you've got a question for us, contact at TotalSockShow.com. If you're a $10 a month subscriber, we guarantee to answer one question per month. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to give away who asked that question, but Mark, good question. Uh, <laughs> shall we move on to today's scouting reports, Daryl Grove? Yes. So if you subscribe at at least the $5 level, mm-hmm. then we add you to the Total Soccer Show Scouting Network. And we ask you to keep an eye on a talented young player. And let us know when they us. get injured. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Richie. <laughs> but thank you for the email, Richie. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have one, two, three, four, five scouting reports to read out today, Taylor, that we have received. Would you like to start? I would love to start. First up comes from Michael, Michael Lazar, who's scouting Jordan Morris. Hey. Morris scored again this past weekend, and he didn't use his right foot <laughs> or his left foot. He scored a, a nice <laughs> header to the near post following a clever run off the back of the defender. Uh, Morris has developed good chemistry with Nicholas Ladero, Nico Ladero, uh, so saith Michael. So I guess they're on... F- Nickname basis. Uh, and Morris now has eight goals and three assists on the year. That's a fine rookie season. It's actually, apparently, if he keeps this rate, he will likely finish second all time for a rookie season. I forget who has the right. Oh, it's uh, Kyle Lahren, who has like 18 yep. goals in a season. So all unlikely right. that he's going to catch Kyle Lahren. And we'll maybe have an eye on Jordan Morris this weekend for Seattle versus Portland. More on that, we think, on Friday's show. Oh, quick note, speaking U.S. men's national team, mm-hmm. just a reminder to people that the U.S., remember the men's national team? Oh, yeah. Remember they have a team? Yeah. They're back in action yeah, more or less. September 2nd, a week way to St. Vincent and the Grendines that is a World Cup qualifier then again September 6th they host Trinidad and Tobago and recently announced there is a friendly against Cuba Cuba October 7th and against New Zealand New Zealand Mm -hmm. October 11th Uh, the New Zealand game is at home at RFK Stadium there we are uh, up next, we have a scouting report from uh, Taylor Mukaria, scouting Jeremy Ebobisi. The 19-year-old forward has signed with MLS and will be in the January draft. He will right. be a Generation Adidas signing and will train with DC United or the Richmond Kickers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, he could sign for DC and then maybe be loaned to the Richmond Kickers exactly. right here in Richmond, Virginia. So we He's might American, co- right? Ebobisi is an American player? Yeah, so we might could see. I, I think he basically had committed to Duke and then decided, and had played at Duke, decided not to return to Duke to turn professional, and so that's why he's going into the draft. But... Maybe we'll be here in Richmond, and maybe we get to see him. And maybe it's our first. No, it's not. We've seen like four or five scouts. I take that back. There's even uh, Chris Durkin, who mm-hmm. we recently assigned, 16-year-old uh, DC player, mm-hmm. U.S. under-17 captain. We've seen him play centre-back in USL. He is 16 years old. He is. We saw three play for one team in the form of New York Red Bulls, too. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so there's also that. Yeah, Tyler Adams, we were very, uh, very impressed with. This is true. All right, up next, Scott Friedman is scouting Emre Moore. Uh, Scott the aforementioned. Said, yeah, he's competition for Christian Pulisic. He was on the bench for the Super Cup, right? Um, which, by the way, they lost 2-0 to Bayern. Julian Green was on the bench for Bayern. Mm-hmm. Still looking good for him. Who would have thought that it would be that way around? It's, it's very strange. Yeah. We live in a surreal world, we do. Scott says that Emre Moore, the Turkish youngster, was subbed on for Aubameyang in the 78th minute of the German Super Cup um, and will likely get first-team minutes this season. He also looks good in silver, even though he's wearing gold and black on the field. Yeah, I know you haven't seen the photo yet. Scott sent us the attached, I think it was an Instagram photo that Emre Moore posted of him wearing like silver-ish shoes and a bright silver jacket. So he's already... Got a, a flair for the dramatic in the professional uh, he, soccer world. It looks like he's spending those euros. A little bit. I, th- I think so. <laughs> I think so. All right. So part of Scott's assignment needs to be now. Yeah. Let's make sure Emre Moore doesn't overdo it. Let's track, the, spend all his money. let's track the evolution of yeah. Emre Moore style. It yeah. reminds me of when Ali G asked David Beckham what that, like, embarrassing garment he was he wore was and Beckham responds it was a sarong and he said it was so wrong but what's it actually called it's a little bit like that young Emre <laughs> young Emre uh, up next we have uh, who's on first for the late 90s <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> actually I think he begins it with we've all seen you wear clothes that make you look like a laughing stock and well embarrassing why do you wear that England football shirt <laughs> uh, up next we have Jacob, Jacob Stolzenbach uh, we're going to continue on the Borussia Dortmund train because he is scouting Felix Paslak they, just, they have so many good young players you remember Felix Paslak as the other 17 year old who was promoted to the first team uh-huh. alongside Christian Pulisic Felix Paslak it seems like maybe in a little bit better of a position he played the full 90 in the aforementioned German Super Cup two usages of aforementioned and executed both his defensive and attacking assignments flawlessly the teenager could challenge for the first team at right back this season particularly since uh, Pisek is getting older so maybe we see pa- Paslak splitting some minutes getting in that first team 
I just got to quibble with Jacob Stolzenbach. Yeah. Um, if he executed flawlessly, how come uh, Borussia conceded two goals? I think it was more that it was he wasn't to blame for either of the goals. <laughs> so he did his job. He got for it. He took on Frank Ribery, apparently, yeah. which is gutsy for an 18 year old. Oh, yeah. But I think maybe just wasn't there to you know stop the goal, but it wasn't necessarily his fault. I know. I was just being a little bit pedantic. There we are. There we are. <laughs> you oh, no. Speaking of, we got the email from Jonathan Holmgren, which we haven't discussed on mm-hmm. the show. Do you remember how we were debating when we did our Premier League preview whether to do AFC Bournemouth first alphabetically and Arsenal yeah. second, or Arsenal first alphabetically? Mm-hmm. Um, Jonathan pointed out that if you um, don't do the acronym, if you actually go Association Football Club Bournemouth, mm-hmm. then... Arsenal go back to the top yeah. of the alphabetical right. table. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've talked about this. When you abbreviate, it becomes Ars B-O-U, so it's always going to be Ars up top. When you go full name, that's how they list it. Even the Premier League uh, fantasy app was confused itself because it listed them two different ways and two different sections of the app. I, was, I think Jonathan supports Arsenal, so he was mm-hmm. like, just trying to get Arsenal back to the top of the table. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever it worth, takes. Worth noting, worth noting. Mm-hmm. Final scouting assignment, Mr. Grove? Is uh, Brad Boldman is scouting Rolando Ahrens. Uh, Rolando Ahrens, Newcastle player? Nope. Um, so For sure now, yeah. Brad says, um, Rolando hasn't had a blistering start to the new campaign. Brad uses the words <laughs> ineffectual and uneventful, um, two descriptors. But Aaron's has signed a five-year contract extension to stay at Newcastle, which might help motivate him to get into gear. There we are. Apparently, there was many, many suitors, both in England and abroad. So evidently, a good thing that Newcastle have locked up the youngster. <laughs> so there you go. There's five scouting reports. We've already had more come in since... And we have more for the next show. I would bet you money we've had one come in since we started recording. They are coming in (laughs) fast and furious. I will check my phone. (laughs) This should be scintillating. The answer answer is actually no, but that is a surprise. Hooray, okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so there's your five for today. If you would like to join the Total Soccer Show Scouting Network, doing so supports the show, helps us make the show happen. Um, you can do so by going to totalsoccershow.com slash subscribe. I will put that link in the show notes. When you subscribe, we assign you a player and the Total Soccer Show gets supported. It is a win-win. Yep, yep, yep. If you have signed up and you have not yet received a player... Please send an email with itchy feet in the subject line and say, I have itchy feet, send me my player. And we will do that as soon as possible. We will. I also just made myself laugh because then I forget. uh, I apologize because I forget the person's name on Twitter. But they tweeted today right before we started recording to say that they know they've been listening too much when they start saying yup, yup, yup all the time, (laughs) which is, which is, I guess, a reference to me saying that all the time, which is a reference to Ducky from Land Before Time, which you still have not seen. I haven't. We've got to remedy that. I mean, to be fair, I've been busy. There was this thing called uh, the Copa America mm-hmm. and Euro 2016. Yeah, I was right there with you. I've still watched it 12 times. <laughs> not this summer you haven't. Yep. No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. I have not at all. All right. On that note, Taylor Rockwell, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you, Dogo, for taking the time to talk to me today. Listeners, thank you for listening. Roughneck Scarves, thank you for sponsoring this episode. We will talk to you again tomorrow. Tomorrow.